Hello, hello, hello. This is Attorney Mike Gravelin coming to you from Chicago. As usual, I got some good stuff. I have people to thank. I'll figure I'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> Cause I got sent really good clips. It's all it's all awkward. Let let's do it, shall we? Can I ask you a question? Yes, Judge. Why would you do, why would you do this? Well, come back through. There we go. All right. Okay. So we're the, on the record. Okay. All right. We are going on the record in the matter of the State of Michigan versus Michael R. Smith, two three nine seven five, and appearance counsel. Good morning, ma'am. Please, this most honorable court, Raina Mitchell, appearing on behalf of Michael Larceny, who's appearing via Wayne County Jail on Zoom. Mr. Larceny, we need you to unmute and state your name. Michael Larceny. All right, thank you. Today's the date together for the probable cause conference in this matter. And counsel, you have an opportunity to speak to your client via breakout room and also the prosecuting attorney, correct? Correct, Your Honor. And uh, it's our uh, wish to waive the preliminary examination and be bound over to circuit court on the charges. Um, okay, I'm all right. This is not what that's not what this uh sheet shows. Um, I don't know what sheet okay. you have. <laughs> oh, he might have put adjournment for something, but I, after speaking with my client, I told him that may be a possibility that we may waive as well. And so he wishes to waive. Okay, this. so you're going to waive. Okay, yeah. so let me just get another sheet for Mr. Uh, for Mr. Case. I'm gonna have him um, do let me just I'm gonna move him here to the main session. So, just one moment. Brian wants to do another sheet on larcenies. It's a waiver. Well, he's going to have to sign anyway. So, I want to take the file back. Yes, he does have to sign. Um, this one sinks slowly, but don't worry, it hits bottom. That's just okay. Just see if Mr. K. Hyde can just jump in that courtroom real quick, please. Can you send my email? All right. And so, Council, I just want to make sure that Mr. K. Hyde um, yeah, is she also has a to sign off on it as well. When so, I get around to um, it. Mr. K. Hyde. Hey, good morning, Your Honor. Mr. K. Hyde, P214. All right, thank you. This is the matter of Michael Arsenis, and uh, the form you sent in indicated during PCC, but just so you're aware, counsel um, on the record indicated they're going to waive the exam on Mr. Larsenis. Do the people have any objection to that? I have no objection to the waiver, Your Honor. All right, so I'll go through all this, and then I'll have you sign this in just a few moments. Okay, and Mr. Larsenis? Yes, ma'am. You heard what your attorney indicated, correct? I did, yes, I did, ma'am. Okay, and you understand that you do have the right to have a preliminary examination or must be shown a crime as when a probable cause exists to charge you with that crime, correct? Yes. And you understand that by waiving your preliminary examination, you will be bound over to circuit court on the charges in the complaint. Do you understand that? Yes. <laughs> and you've received a copy of the charges in the complaint, correct? Yes, ma'am. And has anybody promised you anything, threatened you, or coerced you in any way for you to waive your right to your preliminary examination? No, ma'am. <laughs> All right, and on counsel, I'm going to indicate on the signature line, I'm just going to write via Zoom for both you and your client. Is that acceptable? Yes, Your Honor. We give the court permission to sign our names. All right. Well, I appreciate that. I'm just going to sit, indicate via Zoom. Um, and so the court will indicate that examination having been waived, defendants bound over to the court to appear on May 25th at 9 o'clock in the morning on the charges and the complaint. Anything else, counsel? Your Honor, we would like to address okay. bond. Okay, just one moment. Bond is currently $25,000 cash, GPS tether house arrest, 
And the event bond was posted uh, also not to possess and consume alcohol or drugs unless prescribed. Your Honor, we're asking that the bond be reduced. We're asking for a personal bond with the tether. Uh, Mr. Larson uh, does own a lawn care service, Your Honor. He states that he can make up to $200 a day. He has two children. He lives with his elderly mother that he helps to provide um, care for. And that's the address he would be providing to the court as well, Your Honor. So we're asking for a personal bond of $25,000. He cannot afford to pay that, Your Honor. All right, and so um, where is this, where does this, where does this bond live? 277 seven Riverbank. Okay, that's the Riverbank address. All right, well, here's what the court's going to. Okay, so far so good. This is where things go south. Indicate the court um, in reviewing Mr. Larson's criminal history. So it should be known that Mr. So Mr. Larson is here on two charges of possession of controlled substance. His criminal history dates back to 1989, and he goes by a couple of different names as well. The court will note that we have a larceny conviction out of Taylor from 1989, 2001 felony, uh, receiving concealing stolen property in 2001, 1999, tampering, disorderly tampering out of 25th District Court. And then we have misdemeanor breaking and entering out of this court in 2001, 2003, 24th District Court, larceny, conviction, felony matter. Well, there's my first thank you. Thank you, uh, Kathleen Estrada. This is where I got the, this video. Taylor in 2001, reduced from misdemeanor breaking and entering a vehicle. Then we have a 2002 charge 2003 conviction out of the 28th district court for disorderly person and in 2002 there's a, another conviction out of lincoln park for possession or discharge of a dangerous weapon 2006 following out of, the, out of lincoln park malicious destruction of property largely from a motor vehicle malicious destruction of property also out of the 25th district court on oh, the 2007 that one was dismissed and 2008 out of the 28th district court mr larson needs pled guilty to disturbing the peace then um he moved up to the thumb area and in 2010 in st louis police department there's felony fraudulent activities that was amended to attempt financial transaction device conviction 2011 out of um, the uh, Gratiot County retail fraud, third degree, pled guilty. Then Isabella County, you moved on over to the west, northwest side of the state. Felony fraudulent activities, no contest of financial transaction device. That was in 2011. Then 2014, in this court, uh, resisting obstructing an officer. And then in 2016, out of this court, possession controlled substance. 2017, out of this court, a felony controlled substance possession that was dismissed. 2016, out of the 25th District Court, possession, pled guilty. 2018, back in this court, possession controlled substance. Two charges of that, pled guilty, 2020, driving that suspended license out of this court, 2020, larceny out of this court, 2022, 23rd District Court, that was dismissed. And then there's some other matters that don't show the results of anything. Then, and the court will also note that Mr. Larceny is back here on two possession charges. This time, this is alleging possession of crack cocaine and heroin. And so, given the... Your Honor, before you make a decision, I just would like to add, uh, respectfully, um, I understand that he has a lengthy criminal history. However, he's paid his... Um, 
he paid for those crimes already, Your Honor. So, you know, to say that if you had more money, right, if he was able to financially pay $20,000, none of those crimes would matter, right? So it's not really about his criminal history. It's about his financial stability at this point. And clearly he has a drug problem, Your Honor, and making him sit in jail or, you know, not allowing him to get a, a, a reasonable bond is not going to cure that, you know, underlying issue, Your Honor. Um, so I understand we're reading his, his criminal history, but we're dealing with the one case that we have before us right now. And I don't think he should suffer for those, you know, old cases, Your Honor, because he suffered at that time for those cases. So we're just asking for a nominal bond that he can afford to pay for this specific case, not every case he's ever had in his life, Your Honor. Okay, counsel, and I can appreciate your advocacy for your client. However, this, uh, your client is also charged as a habitual offender fourth offense, and the court in determining bond um, does take into account your, the uh, individual's criminal history. And the fact that your client does have a drug problem, right, the court also has to take into account the safety of the public. And while I'm not indicating Mr. Larsonese should be suffering from any of his previous convictions, I'm not indicating that he is in custody because of his previous convictions so that he can suffer, but your client has a drug problem. If he's in custody, we know he's not getting the drugs. We know that he can get any uh, mental health services that he may need. He can certainly request that there at the Wayne County Jail. But this court needs to make sure that Mr. Larson is going to return to court and also to make sure that the safety of the public is ensured as well as the safety of Mr. Larson and given the fact that he's looking at a significantly enhanced sentence because of the fourth offender notice, this court's going to continue the bond as indicated. I can certainly refer this to DSU counsel if you would like. Yes, yes, I would, Your Honor. And j just one last thing for the record, so if he had $20,000, none of that other things would matter, right? Like. The objections overruled, counsel. Your Honor, the defense strenuously objects and. <laughs> So, I don't know. Okay. Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. Can I indicate that at all? No, I but the not. bond is 20000 right? You're saying it's 20000 with house arrest and GPS tether. So, I'm saying that. $25,000 $25, cash time. That's correct. Any objection? All objections. That is so, so awkward. We were doing fine. She made her argument that it's the standard argument. It was insulting because she said it to the judge like it was novel. It's the, it's the bond argument made literally every time. That's okay. It's okay to make it once. The judge very clearly set forth her, her basis for her, for her decision. She isn't changing her ruling. And the, the sarcastic laugh, I would have been held in contempt. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. But you know, she she just she just keeps going, and and the attitude it, it it's bad. But the judge handles it well. Anything else? Nothing further, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh, look at your attitude. Like, I did you something. Girl, I haven't done you anything, I promise you. Do you have any questions, sir, regarding your general rights? He said no. All right. So you've been charged with Atta County misdemeanor on an underlying terroristic threat. That is out of Brazos County. It was a no bond, but I have removed the no bond condition and set that bond at $5,000 to allow you to post bond out of Travis County and not have to wait the 10 days in jail for Brazos County to pick you up. Are you requesting, I'm sorry, do you have any questions regarding your charge or bond amount? <laughs> Thank you, Becky, 1985, for this painful clip. I've removed the no bond condition set by Brazos County 
and set that bond at $5,000 to allow you to post bond out of Travis County and not have to wait the 10 days in jail for Brazos County to pick you up. Will that help you? Um, no, ma'am. $5,000 more than I can afford. I, 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 I was just granted probation in... Uh, I think y'all are frozen. Can y'all hear me? See if it was two thousand, but she's not going to help me for five thousand. I need to support my wife, ma'am. Okay, you froze, so I didn't hear any of that. Um, so the going rate to get out of jail is for you to pay five to ten percent of the bond amount. So that work for you that works out to be anywhere between two hundred and fifty dollars to five hundred dollars to any attorney or bondsman of your choice. They do work 24 hours a day. You will be given access to the phone in order to hire them. Okay? Yes, I hear you, ma'am. But I was trying to explain I need to be out because I was just I just took probation in Hayes County. And I need to be out because my wife is six months pregnant and she depends on me financially. But my mom isn't going to help me if it's 5000 So I either need a personal bond. Oh, man, I got to get together. Like eight or the only thing she was considering two thousand, but she's probably not going to help you bond that at all. All right, sir. Let me explain something to you. I just repeated it. I'm going to say it one more time. In order for you to get out on a five thousand dollar bond in Travis County, you pay five to ten percent of the bond amount. That's two hundred and fifty dollars to five hundred dollars to any attorney or bondsman of your choice. They work twenty four hours a day. You will be given access to the phone to hire them. Okay. I understand. I just, I just thought some of the bonds are granted. We don't give PR bonds or out of county holds. Now, if you hire, if you have an attorney, that attorney can give you, a, can probably obtain a PR bond for you. So that brings me to my next question: Are you requesting that I appoint you an attorney to help you this morning? Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. So order. Take care of yourself, sir. Um, ma'am, ma yes. ma sir. Why, why was the warrant out of Travis County if it's for Brazos County? There is no warrant out of Travis. This case is for Brazos. And and then I was also already assigned a two thousand bond dollar bond when I was in Hayes County. <laughs> I have no idea. I'm just telling you what we show here. This is from Brazos County. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Where is Brazos County? No, I don't. I don't know. Where's Brazos, ladies? I don't even know. I don't know. You're the one who's committing crime there. I've never even been to Brazos County. So I'll say uh, you guys know where Brazos County is? No, we work here in Travis County. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a big state. There are a lot of counties. Like, I have no idea where that is. Although it sounds familiar. It's probably somewhere outside of Houston, right? Brian. It's Brian College Station. Mm -hmm. All right, you been down there, sir? That's where it is. College Station. Texas A&M. Yeah. All right, take care of yourself. There you go. All right, it is 1 o'clock. We're scheduled for six probationalization hearings at 1 o'clock. All right. Um, I have to thank Alyssa for putting me onto this one. We'll see how we do here. This, this combines two recurring themes here at Law Talk with Mike. Addiction is horrible. It, it leads to nothing good. And so are relationships. And, and one leads to the other. It's, it's, all, it's all a dopamine issue. Bad relationships and drugs, you know, are create dopamine. And people just can't get enough of them, despite the fact that they know that neither of them are good. The first matter we're going to address is People versus Mark Allen Ritchie. The file number is 222163. Mr. Ritchie is here with his lawyer, Mr. Tim George. His probation agent, Matt Huff, will be here with him in just a moment. Here he is now. <laughs> Mr. Ritchie was originally charged with domestic assault as a third felony offender. Do you have any files for these? 
Um, and it was charged as a felony, alleged to have occurred on 9-17 of 22. Uh, the matter was reduced to a misdemeanor. And I'm just feeling that was the judgment. And on January 1st of 22, I'm not sure that's right. I'm thinking January 1st of 23, he was placed on probation on a domestic violence second offense. We've been struggling, um, and there was a probation violation petition no, no such thing, filed Penny. by Matt Huff. Uh, and the petition alleges that he has violated his probation by failing to abstain from the use of alcohol or drugs Aww. or to test upon demand. Yes, you that was set April 4th. Uh, the defendant was here at that time, pled not guilty, and I think he also had a new case, 23469FY, which also could have been a basis for the violation. Um, Matt, you've got an amended status report. I don't know if I've got it yet, um, but let's talk about this. Mr. Ritchie, the allegation is that you continue to use drugs or alcohol after you were placed on this probation, and uh, that was the basis for the hearing. I had actually held 180 days over your head. There's an allegation that there was another assault, and uh, there was a new arrest for domestic violence. <clears throat> Matt was recommending at that time that I impose the balance of 180 days that were deferred. <clears throat> Mr. Hoff. It's, it's almost as if he's not complying with his probation. What's your recommendation at this time? Well, Your Honor, I've had the chance to speak with Mr. Ritchie on a couple of occasions from that point um, that you're referencing back when the, the new charge uh, was <clears throat> filed. Since that uh, case has been dismissed, we've got Deborah. Um, so that he's not facing any, at least as far as I'm aware, he's not facing any new pending charges. Um, really, what needs to be addressed today are the two technical violations um, that Mr. Ritchie committed by refusing the preliminary breath test when that new when that an initial event happened and then also um, when he showed up for his arraignment on April 4th he was requested to go to the day reporting center and test in which he tested positive for alcohol so we have two positive alcohol tests essentially um, my conversations with Mr. Ritchie have been relatively encouraging. I, th I think he's still got some things he needs to get going and, and get in the right direction. However, um, I initially recommended that there be a no contact put in place uh, with Ms. Grant. Since the case is dismissed, I'm retracting that. And then um, um, Mr. Ritchie did spend one night in jail on the, on the other charge, which was dismissed, in which he refused the PrEP test. Um, so I'm just simply amending my recommendation to be a day scheduled. Um, for the positive alcohol test and that we continue this probation. I think he has an alcohol problem that is not more than likely um, based on the fact that we have two positive tests since basically April. I'm sorry, uh, end of March. So, um, I like to think so I would like to examine that a little bit further, but I would also like Mr. Ritchie, given his extensive history with domestic violence, a chance to complete the domestic violence group as initially um, proposed in his judgment or ordered in his judgment. Well, that was January. We haven't gotten that started yet by May. No, there's a new class. We transferred over to a different class setup, um, which is much more affordable, which is why I really would like to get Mr. Ritchie into this one. He can pay as he goes now. Um, he's had problem with employment in the past. He's moved from Battle Creek to Sturgis, um, or perhaps Sturgis to Battle Creek and then back. Um, he says that he now is employed in Sturgis. However, he's got some physical ailments that have left him off um, this week and, and then towards the end of last week. Where's so. he working? Um, I don't have it in my status Where are you report. Working? It was Basin. It was Basin, and they, uh, I, uh, it was just I was lifting heavy metals, 
<laughs> what is basin? It's a it's a welding factory. It's just I was cutting all the metal for uh, them to make these crates where they'd send to like Toyota and um, all them big car factories. Welders are a different breed. God knows we need them. It, it's important work. It's hard work. But I'm just telling you, I've represented a lot of them. Welders are a different breed. Have you discussed this with your client? I have, Your Honor. Mr. Richard, you're going to admit that you violated your probation by drinking alcohol? Yes, sir. And refusing one test and then testing positive on April 4th, which wasn't good. Do you understand by doing that, you'd be giving up your right to have a hearing in this regard? Yes. What prompted you to drink the weekend of April 4th? Um, it's just uh, we were just celebrating uh, her divorce. Well, on the scale of bad reasons, that's probably a pretty good bad reason. Um, why shouldn't I just give you 180 days in jail? Because I want to try. I don't want to drink. I just I want to try and get a job. It's, it's so subtle, but that's what I love about Middleton. He just throws that stuff in the middle. On the, on the scale of uh, uh, bad reasons, that's a pretty good bad reason. <laughs> okay, Judge. You know, get back to work. and. Well, uh, the the problem is in. you aren't trying very hard. Um, you're all sh blow and no show. This is your third domestic violence arrest. You got arrested for domestic violence while you were on. I'd also get contempt for, for dropping that phrase. Probation for a third <laughs> offense reduced to a second. Case was dismissed. And I still have the feeling where there's smoke, there was fire. I don't exactly know why mm -hmm. it was dismissed. Often it has to do with lack of cooperation from the complainant. But I'm concerned about this. Certainly, uh, she had struggles in her marriage, which we won't get into. And I don't want her to be right back in the frying pan. I don't either, Your Honor. With you. And alcohol is your problem. You haven't done the domestic violence class. Um, Matt is willing to take a chance on this. And I still have 180 days hung over your head. Ms. Davis, do you have any input on this? I do, Your Honor, and I obviously respect um, the probation department, Mr. House, recommendations uh, in cases, but I, I think there's more. That's what I'm saying. It, it, there, there's no good. There's no good um, interpretation of that. But but when you're focusing mellow as uh, Judge Middleton, you get away with it. To this, then, what really meets the eye? Uh, looking at the felony case that was dismissed, it was because we did not get the cooperation of Ms. Grant and she could not be found to get a subpoena to her. So it wasn't for the belief that this didn't happen or that it wasn't serious. Uh, we, we believe that it did happen. And in reviewing the report that was associated with that, he was so intoxicated that he couldn't even blow into a PBT to determine his level of intoxication. He was taken to the hospital. Uh, you know, as far as the DV portion of it, you know, the allegations were slapping, pushing, saying inappropriate things. But it's still something where if you're on a probation, and this happened on I call March that Tuesday 18th. night. So uh, you're on a probation. And you're given this opportunity, you're given the tools, you're given the resources, and you still choose to get so intoxicated that you can barely stand up and need to go to the hospital. That's more than just a problem. Uh, you know, that's a very dangerous situation. And I think that more jail is, is probably warranted in this. Um, and for Ms. Grant, it's, it's frustrating that her family's trying to help her. She's calling them for help. They're calling the police for help, sending the police. And then here we are. Um, it, it's very frustrating. And I don't want to see her be injured um, or worse. So with that, I would leave it to the court's decision on, on what punishment is appropriate. All right. Well, it has become essentially a technical violation. There were allegations he was very intoxicated at the time of that. 
Um, and then he had to be taken to the hospital. Your Honor, I didn't have to go to the hospital. They cleared me at the motel room. All right. And it's not a complete violation, but I'm going to order five days jail, which is what is in line for a technical violation credit one. I know where there's free lodging. You're just going to do it now. I'm serious as a heart attack, Mr. Ritchie. You're either going to get on the bus or get off of it. Um, is do you have some disagreement? Bus? Yes, Your Honor. I, I didn't. That, that, by that. All right. Well, let's go with 180 days, credit one. I felt like I was just cutting you a break. I apologize. I, I, you are, right? I get All right. That. I then you're going to do five days, credit one, and you're going to do it right now. And uh, I want you to act like you're on probation and you're under supervision and you've got 180 days hanging over your head. So the probation is continued. When you get out, we'll deal with this. I want you to do the DV class primarily. No assaultive or threatening behavior and no alcohol. All right, you can go with the officer. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Uh, Jonathan Tullis is here. I left that in because I knew, I knew y'all like like the placement of the cuffs. I know my people. Uh, and let's talk to him. Is he dying? There's Rick Harris. Um, said, Your Honor, I just kept this in the books instead of changing it to a consult. Um, he's been, he did his jail. He's done everything except he hasn't paid it in full, but he's been making some very regular payments. He's made like five payments since the last time we spoke. So my recommendation at this point would just be to discharge him and do a payment plan. Well, Mr. Tallis, you got a new baby. Let's call. Oh, this gets awkward by accident. It's fun. Call the case. I didn't even get that far. Uh, 201053SM, <laughs> People versus Jonathan P. Tullis. He's here with his attorney, Lori Hines. Put on probation on a charge of aggravated assault from 2020. According to Mr. Frazine, he's done most of what he was supposed to do. You're working at TH Plastics? Yes, Your Honor. I'm assuming you have no objection to that. No, yeah. How much is left to pay, Dan? Uh, well, with the oversight, I think we're at um, thirty around thirty three hundred dollars. All right. If I can dismiss the oversight fees. I want to get the restitution paid. Because there was restitution amount of three thousand one hundred sixty four fifty, right? Right. I'm going to waive oversight and probation or restitution is preserved. I was going to skip this, but it has one moment that's so delicious. Mr. Tullis, I want you to set up a wage assignment from work, meaning they'll just take some money out of each check to apply towards this. How much can you pay each week? Um, right now, I'm the only income in the house with three kids, so and I'm paying all the pay by myself. So my people, I take out what I can pay that week and come in and pay what I can. Well, I'm gonna order twenty five dollars per week. All right. Can you handle that? Yeah, I can. For each assignment. So do I gotta go to my job and get yep, that you go out to the counter. I'm going to discharge you from probation. I want you to go out and set up that wage assignment. You just had a baby. <laughs> yep. Uh, like a was, year. No, before this one. How old's your other your new other baby? My other two are my oldest is seven and my youngest is five going on six. Oh, I thought you had another infant child. I'm I'm going through uh it's, it's the baby's not mine. Oh. So going, I, I got a lawyer for DNA testing. 
<laughs> the awkward moment when you try to be nice to the defendant and and you <laughs> and you elicit <laughs> you elicit the baby's not mine mid court. I love it. I love it. And his intentions were all in the right place too. I'm but how old is <laughs> your new baby? My new one? Yeah, uh, he's a week and oh, we can. <laughs> Eleven days. Eleven days old. Well, that's about as new as it gets. Yeah. I don't know about the other one, but I want to get this paid off. If I don't, it'll just you'll never do it. So we're going to do a wage assignment at twenty-five dollars per week, which would be a hundred dollars a month, which is a long time to pay it off. But eventually, this assault victim would be made whole, and I could still come in. You can pay more if you if you sell a car or win the lotto or something. Um, and then he's responsible for delivering the paperwork to his employer. Then yes, they'll okay. help you out at the counter. Okay. So I'll have the bailiff take you out there. All right. Does that make sense? Yep. All right. Thanks, Your Honor. Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Um, I had five of these. Maybe the clerks, you aren't here. Maybe the clerks knew something I didn't. I thought, how am I going to do five of these in a half an hour with Debbie here? <laughs> Unfortunately, hey. I mean, uh, five she's of scared. Maybe it's distracting me. So. <laughs> Oh, wow. Ruby and Gilbert. All right, well, let's call John Gilbert. He's a particular disappointment. Mr. Harris, you're here on some zoning matters. I'm going to put you in a waiting room. We'll be with you in a minute. Um, Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, John Gilbert filed 21117FY is represented by Mr. John Bush, um, Daniel Frazine. Oh, Mr. Gilbert is here. Oh, he's been here all Oh, okay. Well, good. Do you, need a, do you need a consult or anything, Daniel? Uh, no. All right. As I said, I was disappointed when I heard he wasn't here because he's been fighting a fight but struggling. Um, good afternoon mr gilbert hello gilbert was originally charged in this file 211117fy with possession of methamphetamine it's alleged to have occurred in january of 2021 the probation license petition alleges that he failed to report on a monthly basis failed to pay fines and costs failed to abstain from the use of alcohol or drugs failed to participate in treatment uh, the arraignment was March 29th. He pled not guilty. I'm not sure if this is another one of those ones that got set for that April date that got bumped out, but uh, Mr. Bush was appointed. The matter was set for today. In his status report, Mr. Frazine goes through the history of what we've been doing with Mr. Gilbert for a couple of years. Um, and is recommending a substantial jail sentence. Daniel says something telling in his report. It is unfortunate to say, however, this officer has come to expect failure on these meth cases. This drug is so gripping and consuming, it's very hard for our clients to break its grasp on their lives. That is why so very often, as in this case, I give extra grace and try to give them more room to help put some distance between them and their addiction. Yeah, this one's kind of sad, and it actually gets a little dark. And then you go on to say he did do some things. Um, and your suspicion is he's still using. Um, John, what does your client wish to do here today? <clears throat> Excuse me. There is a four-count allegation. He is going to admit those today. Obviously, he wants to give explanation to the court through himself and my elocution. Mr. Gilbert, you and I have had several of these discussions in the two years that you've been on this probation. Uh, do you understand that if you do admit to this probation violation, you'll be giving up the right to have a hearing in that regard? Yeah. Mr. Bush is here with you, would represent you, or you could hire an attorney. You're not entitled to be proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt, although sometimes that's not hard to do in these cases, but the standard is one of a preponderance. 
there's no jury trial, but you are entitled to have a hearing to establish that you violated the probation. Anybody threaten you to get you to plead to this charge? No. Or promise you anything? No. All right. Do you admit that you continue to uh, use drugs and alcohol or primarily methamphetamine? Yes. Um, and what happened to your treatment at Bowen Center? Um, they were doing a random urinalysis test, which I didn't oppose to. Uh, just, they roll dice, you get a number. And I was fine with taking them until I finally got charged with having to pay for one. And there were $493 for one drug test. And we thought ours were bad. Yeah, that's, I've, I've never heard of that from Bowen, but he showed I, yeah, the bill. I, and I don't know if that was accumulation oh, because I, that's quite expensive. Yeah. yeah, that was supposedly only one. I mean, I'm, I still got a bill for it. And, um, the Bowen Center also, like, I got to pay in advance for them. Well, when did you my, stop going there? Oh, uh, when I, when they started uh, charging me for. So when was that? Like March? January. January. Okay. I'll go for that. <laughs> nah. What are you doing now? It's just um, a long I have nothing. All right. Well, Mr. Bush, what would you like? Get it to forever. Do? Well, we, we talked this afternoon um, he's here with his mother who was not in the best of health and he's dependent upon her for for transportation um, he, he tells me he, he went he said to 10 sessions he thought at the bowen center uh, and he thought he was making progress but the cost and expenses became too much for him to handle they put him on medication he said through a psychiatrist there that he started having suicidal thoughts and he was uncomfortable with that. He did go for a period of time to NA and to some AA meetings. By the time he paid for the test, he didn't have any money left for meth. I don't believe those were documented. Uh, he has a job at McDonald's in White Pigeon. Still, he's working about 30 hours per You week. are still at the White Pigeon? Yeah, McDonald's? I'm at the same store. Loving it. Uh, he tells me... He wants to do rehab. I have an Indiana address for him, and I don't know how, how Medicaid works in the state of Indiana, but apparently he doesn't have any Medicaid coverage, and he's working poor and doesn't have health insurance. So paying for these services have been difficult. If he would have been a Michigan resident, I think Mr. Frazine probably could have gotten him into, I can't think of their new name, community mental health or whatever. Thank you. It could have done services in our county. Uh, I'm told there are no new criminal charges pending against him during the pendency of this case. Uh, he He's here today. As I say, he wants to do rehab. He indicates that it's a financial consequence for him to do it. Thank you. Well, I like Mr. Gilbert. He did not have much of a criminal record. Somewhere, somebody introduced you to methamphetamine, which turned your life upside down. And I do think you don't want to be an addict anymore. But if I tested you today, what would show up? I don't, I don't know, honestly. I, I relapsed on Sunday, and I think that I would, um, I don't know, is like, what, three days or something five days ten days i don't know exactly all right i appreciate your candor debbie you have anything to add well i do appreciate that he is <coughs> being honest about his struggles uh, we're looking at uh, relapse situations that that were repeated throughout the um, pendency of his of his probation and still just you know a few days ago which is obviously concerning. I appreciate that he wants to do rehab, but if he's not able to get into that, uh, perhaps a period of forced sobriety uh, with imposing those 84 days that are still left is appropriate. Again, the court ordered those at the beginning because they were justified, um, and then he was given the opportunity to avoid having to go through those days if he were to abide by the probation. He has had probation violations. He served five days as a sanction for his first one. So, you know, that, that's it. I think he did that twice. So, you know, this is it. I mean, if, if probation is not going to be used by him to stay clean, 
and his mom is unfortunately the one that's to drive him everywhere and, and take him to these things and he's not able to do the treatment then I, I think just imposing that reserve jail and cutting him loose from the probation and hoping that perhaps at the jail he can get involved with some services um, they have been able to place people at, at rehabs um, it just depends but doing what he's doing now clearly isn't working and 30 hours a week working is not keeping him out of trouble and he's I think jail is probably the best option at this point uh, and I presume he's a good employee and so he should be able to hopefully get that job back when he gets out. I know where there's free lodging. Well he did fight the fight for two years we had some fits and starts but I tend to agree he needs some forced clean time. Unfortunately, it's going to cost his job. I'm going to order. So I had 84 minus 5. I'm just going to do it this way. 45 days credit zero. I'm going to cut that about in half. There'll be some good time in there. You need at least 30 days of just forced sobriety to start to get squared away. Debbie also mentioned perhaps Covered Bridge or somebody can set up rehab for you. Otherwise, the rest of your life is going to be work, relapse, lose a job, work, relapse, disappoint everyone that loves you, relapse, die. Um, I'm revoking your probation. I'll get off your back. I'm not ordering 84 or 79 days. We're going with 45. With good time, that'll be a little more than 30 days, which is a good start for clean time. All right, Mr. Gilbert. As far as the fine and precautioner, are you just waiting uh, waving oversight? Everything. Yep, everything. Oh, everything? Yep. All right, good luck, sir. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. Well, sorry, that one got a little somber. You, you saw Judge Middleton get all serious, but that 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 was fun. We, we still had the we still had. Um, he said, "I thought you had a baby." <laughs> He's trying to be friendly and say, "I know you," and acknowledge him as a human being. But then the defendant has to be like, well, I, that, that one wasn't mine. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a sore subject for me, to be honest, Judge. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we see it every day. We, we had one in the grip of alcohol, one in the grip of meth, and uh, they, 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 they can't seem to pull it together. So it's uh, it's kind of sad. But there, there you have it. There you have it. Those, those are the ones I had for today. Thank you all for coming out. I appreciate it. I'll see you all soon.